My name is Bob Wood. I'm sort of retired and sort of enthusiastic about trying to find the answer behind the UFO mystery, and I'm enjoying, enjoying it all. There are, I think, many things that are related to the focus that I've had, which is authenticating question leaked documents. And this began when I retired and had the opportunity to start on one document, which was a, turned out to be a, a manual for retrieving crashed flying saucers. But that resulted in my getting some exposure that, so that I now have 4,000 pages from 10 different sources of documents, a thousand of which are classified, a thousand pages of which are classified top secret. And so these documents themselves, which are on my son's website, www.majesticdocuments.com, can be each brought up and you can see a summary of what the document says and also an authenticity meter to tell you whether or not based on considerations of provenance and, and physical type and intellectual issues, whether they're, whether they're solidly authentic or not. And then you can just click on these documents and read the documents and they tell the story of the secrecy from 1941 to, in effect, the present. And, and that's really the, the most important story. It, it, it tells so many things. It tells when we first recovered the craft in, in 41 and 42, that began the process of, of technology. The technology issue was the one thing that drove it because we were essentially at war and we couldn't let our enemies have this technology. And then so that having, was the purpose of the secrecy? Yeah, that was the purpose of the secrecy. So from that point on, the, it, was, it, was, it went to the Cold War and so the secrecy was warranted to be continued with the Soviet, uh, protected from the Soviet Union. And in the process, that secrecy protection resulted in the violation of the Constitution and law and in such a way that now so many people could be prosecuted and thrown in jail for the bad things they did that that's a lot of reason for not wanting to to go public with so now, the details. Some skeptics would say offer us hard proof and you're looking for hard proof documents and trying to authenticate the documents but some skeptics will always say the documents false they'll never believe you no matter how much you try to authenticate and try to authenticate what is the burden of proof what would finally be the piece of evidence that could crack open the whole truth embargo. I try to think of it as, as if it were an issue in a court of law and use the same criteria that a judge would use. So you start with the first question, provenance, that is can you track the, the document itself through its ownership processes and of course for most of these documents you cannot. That makes it much particularly hard. But I do have three documents where the original paper and ink and that sort of thing. But the, 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 the second thing you can do is, is to, to use, to use the, uh, the type of font and other physical things about the document to, and the markings, you know, that are, are sometimes shown. The, the, the standard characteristics of government documents, a lot of stamps, a lot of bureaucratic procedures that sometimes reveal this seems to be a legitimate document. And then finally, you can even go to things like the language and the words. I'll give you one example. The words screwdriver in 1954 were commonly hyphenated. And today it's all one word. And so that's one of the things that kind of, it doesn't prove, but it suggests very strongly that this is a document from that era. And there, there are other examples you can, you can find in the document. So you do the best you can. You find that in spite of this, the skeptics will depending on whether they're hard-nosed skeptics who just want to blow away the subject or whether they're genuinely concerned as to whether it's an authentic document. Uh, depending on their attitude, you, you can do the best you can and try to answer all of their questions, some of which are legitimate, and, and having done that, hope that you, know, you win the argument publicly. Typically, however, what I've found is that the skeptics who have challenge, for example, the Special Operations Manual that I mentioned, Extraterrestrial Entities and Technology, Recovery and Disposal. The skeptics came up with 15 
concerns that they had about it. And I answered every single one of those 15 concerns in, I think, a very powerful and effective way. And the answer was totally ignored. We never answer the response. So you, you do the best you can, but if nobody really is interested or listening, or if it's just a cover-up from, from the beginning, why, you can't get there.